part two, episode 248. I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Winnie. For new people, welcome to the show. We hope you like it. And regulars, welcome back. A couple of shout outs. We have a couple of knit alongs going on. Uh, the Blue Moon Fiber Arts is a year long knit along. We pull winners every month. Uh, for a oh, pattern, you know what? We haven't heard from the winner from last month. I'll have to mock Moxer. Sorry, that's an internal thing for work. I'll have to PM her. <laughs> yeah, PM her and see. Um, so the, each month is a um, pattern, and last month's was sponsored by Looney Hiker, Pat. And a needle minder by Vintage Fairy. This happens to be one that I have. It's all different colors, all different styles. So uh, I will PM the person on Ravelry. So they know they won. So that they know they won. And um, we also have a variegated yarn knit along. It ends the end of April, right? January, February, March, April, yeah. Yeah, so it's coming up. End of it's coming up. Get end of it's coming done. up, and we need to think of a new thing. Yeah, so I guess we better look at the trusty what should we do thread. Yes, there's been some good ideas there. Yeah. So uh, we have those going along. The knittle, uh, yeah, the variegated yarn is it has to be variegated, not tonal. Anything using variegated yarn, it has to be at least 50% of the project, right? Yeah, it can't on. just be like a side thing. It's got to be at least 50% of the project to count. Um, okay. So I have exciting news. Um, if you're a longtime viewer, you might remember when I did the Wrought Iron Cardigan by Stephanie Talent, a designer, who I met at Rhinebeck, and I tried on the sample, and she actually sent me the um, Wrought Iron Cardigan pattern early so I could make it before it was published. And since then, we've reviewed a couple of different things that she's done, um, mostly pattern books. But she is going to have a class come out on Craftsy. And it's called Custom Color Work Technique and Techniques Mitts. So I'm guessing that you're going to learn how to knit color work mitts and customize them in this class. That's what I'm guessing. Um, it's going to roll out sometime around May 2nd. And so this is what we're going to do with that. First of all, in our group starting this week, I'm going to put a link from Stephanie where you can win a free contest, a free class from her in a contest. So if you follow the link and do whatever it tells you to do, you can put your name in for a chance to win a free class, this free color work class. Okay. Um, once the class comes out, I am going to do a review, and we are also going to have a coupon code that will be available so that if you want to take the class for 50% off, you That's can. That's good. That's a pretty good deal. Because I think they average, what, about $20? $15, they do. $20? They have specials all the time. You have to yeah. kind of look. But um, getting 50% off class is a really good deal. If you haven't taken a class on Craftsy, you should check it out. I took um, a couple of classes on Craftsy, including one on grading and sizing sweaters, which was, it was a great class. Um, and you can keep dipping back into them forever like oh, okay. once, once you, you buy the class you can ha access it and you know so if you need to brush up on something you can go back into the class and redo that so um it's pretty it's it's pretty good and a lot of them come with like downloadable printoutable materials that you can follow along with charts whatever so um, it's a good deal. And then they do have some free classes on Craftsy. So if you haven't checked out Craftsy, you should. And you should definitely come to our group for a chance to win the free class. And, um, and then after my review, maybe you'll want to try the coupon code. Yeah, that would be great. So um, that's all going to be happening. Well, the contest link is going to be in our group from this show forward until May 2nd or when it comes out. And then um, we'll have the coupon code once the class comes out and I do the review. So keep your eyes open for that. Sounds exciting. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. So um, on the dance card, I have my Atomic Blender sock. I am getting very close to doing the heel. This is the left sock. Right sock? I it's know. the right sock. It's the right sock. Um, and I'm doing it in um, diabolical yarn, watercolor stripes in the catatomic colorway. 
Excuse me. It's pretty. Yeah, I like I it. Like the it's coming out great. And I did finally put it in a bag that, like, matches it better. Because it was in my other bag before, but I had to switch it up. Then the second thing I have on the dance card is my Indigo Frost, which I did work on a bit. It's kind of hard to tell. You can well, at this tell. point, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. I, I did, I did, you like, did a couple inches. two or three inches. Yeah. yeah, I got a lot of work done on it. So, um, yeah, I worked on that quite a bit. Can't wait to see it finished. I know, me too. So we're sticking with the eyelets for now? I am, because. I like the look of them. Now that I don't have to do the, um. The increase? The increases anymore. I don't mind it so much. It's only every four rows. <laughs> so I think it's coming out really great. And I did, I took it along with me and I worked on it a bit. I need to wind another ball. I'm very low on yarn. Probably only like three more rounds before oh. I need another ball of yarn. And that'll be my third ball. Um, and that is in Dream in Color Classy in the In Vino Veritas colorway. And then a bunch of scraps that were from my stash. This is deep stash yarn. I love knitting from deep stash. It's it, so satisfying. It is satisfying. And that's all I have on the dance card. All right. For me on the dance card, I actually have... Hold your horses now. Three things on the needles, which is, you know, that's going to drive me insane. So the first thing I have on the needles is just a generic toe-up sock in, I want to say it's Sakata yarn, but I'm not 100% sure it is. I don't know. For some reason, this it's one... It's some kind of a cotton blend. It's a cotton blend, and it's... All my cottons, unless it's Cascade Fixation, are usually a wool blend. Cascade Fixation, I think, is cotton and... Elastic. elastic. I don't yeah. think there is... There's no wool in it. But all of mine tend to be um, wool cotton blend, and it's like a 40% wool and like 30%... I mean, 40% cotton, 30% wool, and like nylon or something like that in there, too. So this is, um, it's it's okay. I don't know if for some reason I'm not, for some reason, ankle socks tend to take forever, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's just a toe-up, uh, it's not even the Rose City Rollers, because I'm not doing the cuff. It's just a toe-up vanilla with the fish lips kiss heel. I like how the color is working out with the hint of blue. Yeah. This is my US one and a half. What do you do yours on? Two. Twos, yeah. This is US one and a half. <laughs> so that's one thing on the needles. Another thing, I jumped right into my blue moons. I wanted to cast on some blue moon sock, especially dealing with this. So I jumped in and uh, I picked, I showed you guys last week what was coming up next. And it's a mill end, and I love the color. I love how this is coming out. Um, I wish I knew what it was supposed to be for the color, <laughs> just because it's pretty. But Saturday morning, I wasn't in the mood to use my ball winder, so I wound it by hand. It takes about the same amount of time. And I cast on Wendy's Atomic Blender Sock. Backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, I mean, I wasn't trying to test knit this in any which way or form or tech edit it or anything like this. So I was just looking at the chart. So all I did was I looked at the written instructions on how many stitches to knit first. Right. And then I looked at the chart. I didn't even pay attention to what chart I looked at. I looked at the right foot chart, but I'm doing... But on the it, left side. It doesn't really, it doesn't make a difference, but I'm doing, it's not the same placement as her right foot. Show you us when you get a minute. Okay. So see, her chart and my foot are the going the same way. The but slant hers, is going the same. This, I can't but do hers this is this is on that it's side. On our, mine yeah. is on the left. Um, but it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't matter. If in fact, I say right in the pattern. If you wanted to put it straight down the middle, you could. Oh yeah. And you could do them. Um, so I did the sixty-four stitch, but I'm doing mine in medium weight. I could have probably reduced the stitches yeah, because it's easy enough to do. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really. But I wasn't sure if it would pull in. It just, if someone wants to do this when she, when she publishes the pattern, it doesn't pull in. It pulls down. Right. It pulls the front down. You can see, if you look at mine, you can see how the see top of this looks. And on the finished sock, you can see it doesn't pull down that much, but there no. is a dip. In the part of the sock that has it. it. But it doesn't, like, cables pull in. Now, 
So it doesn't it, do that. It, and it's quite stretchy to the side at a at an angle. Like it it doesn't. It's not like it's um tight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's got give to it, but it does pull the front down, and that's why in the pattern I say you might want to knit a little bit more, t a little extra in the heel to account for right. it being a little shorter in the front. Right. Like I think um, for my medium weights, I tend to do about an 80 stitch, 80 row until I hit the heel or something like that. I'll probably do more just to be on the safe side. Yeah, I usually just try um, it on and see how it fits. And if it if the front seems like it's at a good level with the back, then I go ahead and do the heel. So it's super easy and I really enjoy enjoying it. I love how the color is working out. I also like how the color is working out in the sock. It kind of looks like it's striping. A little bit. Yeah, I like um, it too. It's a jewel tone colors with purples and blues and greens. It's very, I don't know, I, I love some of the blues that pop out into it. So it's very easy and I'll do the reverse on the next sock. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the great thing about this pattern and my other pattern, the, um, the um, candy ribbon. ribbon candy sock. You can do it however you want. Right. The base pattern is going to be the same. You decide where you put right. the striping, and it right. I mean, matter. because it's a ten or so inch, it, it can go like you said in the center of the sock. Center side. Um, you could do both socks on the same side if that's how you roll. You could oh, do yeah. them on opposite sides. You can make them mirror each other, or if you don't want to knit the more complicated chart, which is the one that Sheila started, which because to me honestly, to it's not complicated. It's not, but no? you have to pay attention a little more to know when to start the. Um, oh, I didn't think so. The other side but um you just have to notice that when you have one knit stitch left before the you marker, do, the yeah. next time you've got yeah. to start all the way back again it just you have to just pay attention but um even then it's still completely mindless oh it mindless. is it is um but if you don't even want to bother to do that you could do the same you could do the left sock pattern or whatever well, you could do the left sides. socks pattern it, the slant going the same way, but you can move it further down, you know, instead of starting right at the beginning of the left row, you just knit so many stitches in the right. Knit. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this was so easy that I was able to do it during soccer for Zachary, which that was funny. Um, I cast on because I wanted, I don't know, I'm just not feeling the love for this. I don't know why. I really don't know why. Yeah, I got a lot of this knit um, while I was in doctor's offices last week. So it's, and I like it because I don't have to refer to the pattern at all. Yeah, no, once you um, get the whole. Once you know how to do it's it. It's like, it took me at least a couple of repeats to. To get the pattern. To get the gist of the sequence, I guess right. is a good way of saying but it. But once you get it, it's, I didn't even need the pattern to knit this second sock. I didn't have it with me, but the. Since I wrote it, I knew, right. I knew it. I just had to. I had to remember the counts from the other sock, but and just put them in. Reverse. Yeah, no, it's super easy. Um, it, it looks and it's really great. pretty. So yours is in striping. Mine's in. It's supposed to be variegated. I don't. Uh, it, but it's striping a little bit. I think that's because of my stitch count. I bet you if it, if I did my typical uh, medium weight with one well, and a half, one and a half. The slipping two. might be affecting it too. True, because you are slipping oh, three or so four US times two. per row. Uh, if I did sixty stitches, this is sixty four. I think it would have been fine. It w who knows what it would have looked like, but it still breaks it up nice. Yeah, and I still it's like the fun. striping. And um, I like it because it adds a little texture and interest, but it's so mindless mm. that you're just like. My, you don't have to think. No, you it. don't. It's like and, my and, favorite kind of sock. And for me, everybody knows how mine. And uh, Rachel from Diabolical gave me a bunch of tech editing stuff that suggestions. Oh, good. I have a generic heel on the pattern because I feel like if you pay, make someone pay for a pattern, they should have a whole pattern. Even though I'm telling you, in the pattern, and in the thing that describes the pattern, that you should buy fish lips kiss heel. Um, I would put it in the pattern, but she, it's, it's a pattern, it's somebody else's pattern that you have to pay for. So I don't. So I put a generic heel in that way. If you don't want to spend a dollar on the fish lips kiss heel, you could still make a sock. But she was asking me why I did this, the generic heel a certain way in my sock. And I was like, 
I have no memory why that was my generic heel until I learned Fish Lips Kiss. And I have, it's been so long since I've knit it that I don't know why I did anything. She's oh, like, really? why do you do that? I was like, I don't know. She's like, I think it would be easier if you did this. So I was like, all right. I'll sure, change whatever. it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't know. It's been so long since I knit that. That's funny. I know. I can't. I honestly, if I was to try and do a regular short row heel, I don't even. Think I don't I could even do it. think I could remember to do it. No, because the fish lips is just automatic for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah me so too. I have one more um, thing on the needles. Deb Debbie Tomasello. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Debbie Tomasello sent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Color Works so, by Debbie. I'm like, I thought you were talking about the bottles and blades. No, 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 so no, no. no. Um, Debbie Tomasello sent Wendy some yarn, um, a cotton blend, and Wendy doesn't really like knitting with cotton, so I grabbed Sheila it. Sheila is the knitter. She is the I'm the knitter. cotton knitter. Um, cotton, blend yeah, knitter. blend knitter. I don't know. Whatever you want to say. So this is her metal... What's, well, the name of the color is Metallic Spice. It's uh, Spice Cotton and Pia Pia Tensile. Pia Tensile. So it's 50% non moisturized cotton and 50% tensile. And it's two strands together to make it a, f a light fingering weight. So I cast on a pattern by Debbie Tomasello as well. And of course, I can't remember the name of the pattern. I apologize. What the heck? That kid used my iPad. It's all gross. I know that's how mine is too. I'm always like, it's always like jam on it. Well, it's 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 not even sticky. It's like grimy. Oh, uh, oh, that's right. It's CBD fudge an accessory shawl. I know it. What CBD? Because it's colors by Debbie. Oh, fudge an accessory. And the reason why it's fudge is because you can just fudge along. Accessory. Neck accessory. You can fudge along where you want to. Oh, God, what the heck? That didn't show up at all. That's because you don't have... Well, I try and save the battery. Oh, God, this is disgusting. Sorry. See, I clean mine off a lot. Well, this is only happened last night. Why? That is, that's not the brightest, too. Why? What, what's going on? <laughs> there we go. So that's what her shawl looks like. So this How do you is... spell an accessory? Because i got to write this down. Neck. Neck accessory. accessory. Got it. So this is where I started. Or how much I've gotten to it. It's really nice and mindless. And I like the um, the feature of the eyelets every now and again. And she has in her pattern how often to do it. But where the fudge part comes in, you don't have to do it. You know, if you, you want to only do, do it two whatever. or three times. Or you want to do more knit rows between, you can. And her yarn is... The metallic spice or the spice cotton, it's like a, a brownish cinnamon color, right? That has little pops of blue. Well, one, um, one strand is a solid cinnamon brown type color. And then it's got, uh, I don't know, variegated would be. Yeah, it's like peach and blue and, and dark, like a maroon. and. That's where the color comes in. So you have one... One strand of the copper. That's what I'm thinking of. There you go. And then one strand of the multicolored. That has copper and all a bunch of other colors. Yes. And so it's really pretty. And it, it, you know, I was a little worried about with the two strands, if you'd be picking up one and not the other. They sit very well together. I haven't had any issues. Um, and we reviewed her new yarn line in episode 247. And um, the feature of it is that you can pick what two or three or however many strands mm -hmm. of yarn you want together and she'll do that for you so you can customize your yarn. So this is going to be, turn out to be nice and soft. I can't wait. Well, yeah, it's going to like take a while way, for me to finish. But I, like I can't wait the, um, to um, finish it and block it to see how, you know how certain, I mean it's cotton. It's not going to do too much. Right. It's not going to bloom like certain other yarns. Well, it's but it's going to soften it up and sometimes the more you wash it, the softer it gets, right. kind of like, you know, that favorite pair of denim jeans. Because denim typically Yeah, cotton. that's coming out really pretty, though. It is pretty. I and like I the do, colors. I love, I love the, the colors. I like the, um, the eyelets. My stomach. Oh, <laughs> that, that was, was me. Cat. No, it's I my like stomach. the eyelets. So those are the three things I have on the needles. Um, 
I'm not sure how much I'll do each week on them. But well, you know, hopefully, it, hopefully next week the sock will be finished. I'm at an offsite tomorrow, so I'll probably my ankle sock. I'll probably try and power through that one um, so to have that at least. And then with sports coming up, I'll be sitting my tush down and knitting. <laughs> Um, so, uh, rate your date. I have one date. Project half done. My son wants to eat potato chips. <laughs> he asks. I appreciate oh, that. My kids don't even do that anymore. Um, <laughs> and just like we said, he has my iPad, so you know it's going to oh. be covered with grease after this. So this is my completed Atomic Blender sock. Um, in the catatomic colorway of Diabolical Yarns Watercolor Stripe Targhee Sock. I love the colors. I do too. I love this yarn color. I kind of want to do a sweater out of this colorway. It's nice and soft too. Yeah, I like it. It's going to be nice. And you can see it does dip down. Not much. Just a tad. Right where that... Um, and I don't think it would be anything that you would notice wearing no, it. No, I don't think you will. I mean, it. once it's, this is not been blocked very long. You can see it does draw up a little bit. It makes the foot go like, but it's not very much. And um, it fits fine. And as long as you remember to do a stretchy bind off, you can get it off over your foot. Because I was telling Sheila, I put on my um, Lucky Cat striped socks the other day. One of them, I forgot to do stretchy bind off. I did regular bind off and it was like, I couldn't get it on over my foot. Which so I find I have is to, funny, because, I mean, when was the last time you did a regular bind off? You know, I remember doing it while we were recording, and I think I was just um. on autopilot. So anyway, that's half done, project half done. So as soon as this sock is done, and I can take into account the um, notes that Rachel from Diabolical has given me on the pattern, I will publish it. Sounds and it good. will be just like the other one. It'll be like a dollar ninety nine because I encourage you to spend an extra dollar to get the fish lips kiss heel. Absolutely, it's a dollar. Well, worth it's it. worth the investment, and um, it shows you how to do this sock. But it also gives you design tips on if you want to take your favorite stitch and put it on gives you a base sock. Yeah, yeah, because anyone can do this. So I have a project half done. It's one of my ankle socks that I finished last week. And um, I did the fish lips kiss heel. I didn't realize I had a hole. But talking about stretchy bind offs, I do the stretchy bind off on all my socks. Um, this feels weird because it's an ankle sock, so you can feel the breeze going yeah. through. I'm not one for ankle socks, but... Um, Maybe you should have done the roll. Maybe it would have I don't think it would have made much of a difference because it's about the same length. Um, I don't know if I was really super stretchy on this. It I'm does, just but maybe it would have gapped less. Well, the other thing, too, is this is cotton. Um, there's less of a bounce to it. Right. So I don't know if that's part of it. I mean, it's no big deal. It's just a sock on my, you know, just to wear during the summertime. But um, I'm like, ugh. I was, I think that might, you know how if you have something just slightly wrong with your project. And you're just done with you, it. Yeah, you just don't want to yes. do it. So I think that might be why I picked up Blue Moon because I'm like, I don't even want to deal with this anymore. And it's not a bad deal. It's not a big issue. It's just, I don't know. That's how I was with Indigo Frost when I had that stitch count that was off. And I was, I just had to like rip it back. And I was yeah, like, yeah, you just oh, got to power through done. it. So that's what I'm doing with this. I'm just power throwing it. Power through whatever. Powering through it. Thank you. There you go. I've been up since 3.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, half done. It looks, from the distance, it looks weird. It, it looks, has like that one weird stripe in yeah. the Yeah. I don't know why. It must have just had a weird thing. I don't know. It's like all of a sudden the white lines up in such a way. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I love looking at certain things like this to see how it comes out. I mean, I see O's and S's. It just, I love to see how it works out. So that's my project half done. Hopefully I'll have a full project by the next time we record. Um, I think that's it. Whirlwind Romance, nothing, nothing fiber related. Although I have still been working on my scrapbooking and I am powering through 2011. I'm halfway through 2011. Good. So I only have... I'm going back to 2000 and... 
three. So I have eight years. But I have done... I've done five years, four and a half years so far. So I could conceivably finish and catch up by the end of this year. What are you going to do with yourself once you get caught up? (laughs) Well, believe me, I have plenty of stuff that I can, I have secondary stuff. This is, what I'm doing now is just the main events of of every year. But I eventually want to do a book for Lily and a book for Jack that's just focused on them. And so that would be different. And then I have a... um, genealogy book that I started um, six years ago that has all of our old family stuff like nice. Jim's it's we have a lot we're really lucky we have a lot of old photos going back to like the 1700s when oh wow yeah we have old portraits and stuff so um, I started a book on that so that the kids would know our family history and I did on my side of the family and I also did Jim's side of the family so that they could look in that and know where they came from. So I could I could finish that too. I could work on that too. The thing about the earlier years is I scrapped a lot more in paper then, so oh, right. I don't have quite as much to do on the earlier books. I think 2011, 10, 9 and 8 are the ones where I don't have much. Like mm-hmm. that was, was a time when I just was like too busy with too busy with else, the yeah. kids and work and I guess I wasn't working then, but you know what I mean. I'm too busy with life. So those might take a little bit longer than the ones I've been working on. And uh, But I'm enjoying it. I'm doing the um, trip that my husband and I took to Germany for our 20th wedding anniversary right now. And it's kind of fun to see it because I haven't thought about it. And right. now I'm thinking about it. And that's true. So I like that. Well, that's so fun. that's what I'm doing. Um, future dates. My future date is just to finish this up. And get the pattern published. I haven't really thought about what I will be doing next um, for a sock. Because I'll probably cast another sock on. Um, Because I'm going to be in the hospital the second week of May. And I'm sure these are going to be done by then. So I'll probably have another sock. So Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Do you even know which sock you want to knit with? I haven't even thought... I have another design idea, so I might design another sock, but I haven't decided yet. So, future dates for me, nothing really. Just finish what I got. Uh, and maybe really work on that shawl. I'd like to do that shawl. Yeah. Um, I don't have any future dates. At some point, I would like to do the skip sock. that will come up. Someday. Um, Bobbles and bling. I do have bottles and bling this week. So um, Lois had a bag update. And for a couple of weeks, I got a new computer. And when I got a new computer, I started using my terabyte drive. So this has a terabyte of memory on it. It's like a massive amount of memory. And, um, And my old computer was running slow because I had a lot of stuff on it. So on my new computer, the only thing I'm keeping on it are copies of my photos because you should have at least two copies of your photos. Um, But most of my stuff is on this terabyte drive. So all of my scrapbooking supplies is on this drive. So when I do anything with scrapbooking, I plug this into my computer and I just take it all off of this drive. And it keeps a lot of stuff off of my main computer because I don't want to load it up. But so I've just been like using this drive and like sitting it on my place next to where I knit. But I, I keep worrying that something's going to spill on this yeah. or it's going to get banged up. So I was going to ask Lois to make me a custom bag to keep it in. But then I saw she was doing this, um, her notions pouches, which I like because they're flat, you know, they're just pouches. And I was like, oh, I'll just get one of those. <laughs> and it fits perfect. right in there. And um, keeps it, it's like cushioned and it keeps it, it's, it fits nicely. No, it fits, it's a nice uh, sturdy bag. Yeah, and the cord doesn't, it, it has enough room so the cord doesn't, I can keep it plugged into the thing. I don't have to undo the cord. So this is my drive bag. And then I ordered this fox bag, which I thought was super cute. I like the sparkly fabric. I know. I did too. It's You can't probably see it, but it's sparkly. I just thought it was so cute. It's a cute spring bag. 
This would look nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so I just got this today. I haven't used it yet. And then she stuck in another little pouch for me because she knows that I have this bag. Oh, all right. And I'm like, score. I love her little lotion pouches like that. I um, They're too big for my day-to-day -day use, but I love them for stuff like this. Like, this is perfect. I love how flat this is. I have a couple of these, and I use, I store my iPod, my my iPhone, and my Amazon charger cables and stuff in this. Yeah, they're And great. then I have another bag where I take my medicine for, like, when I'm at, because I take yeah. medicine at work. So I have that in another pouch, and I love it. That in my work bag, all I have to do is grab the pouch, and I love it. I love that one. And then I think I have one here for my notions, too. Yeah, I have one that I keep needles in. Oh yeah, because I had her make one. Right, of those. I just I you it was folded when I got the bag, so I keep. keep I it like folded. it folded. I love it. That's kind of cool. But um, yes, thank you, Lolo. I love it. When I saw this, I'm like, oh, it's my favorite. It's my little red riding hood. I know that is your favorite. Isn't it, it is. I love that. I have it in two colors. I have it. Oh, that's white right. White with this, and then I have the black background because oh, I, I like it so about much. That. So those are my latest thing. Oh, good. Um. And that was kind of fun. I just picked those up. When I saw this one, I was like, oh, I got to get that. Because my new reward system, which I'm trying to keep at a minimum cost, um, I plan a reward. Instead of rewarding myself with food. Which we always love I to do. I am rewarding myself for bigger things with something that I can purchase. And... This was a reward for going to the hospital last week, which I will tell you about because you haven't heard about it yet. I only told you. I didn't tell you all the details. I've been oh. saving it up for you. So I deserved bags after that. Oh, all right. Bobbles and bling. I have bobbles and bling, and I have to say thank you to Deb Palmer. Uh, she didn't say I couldn't say her name, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Deb Palmer, thank you. <laughs> Which is Deb Nitz, too, and, and if you didn't want me to say your name, I apologize. <laughs> she generously gave me two skeins of cicada. Cicada? Cicada? Oh, cicada. Yarn. I have socks out of this kind that my mom made me. <laughs> I recognize them. I know. I'm like, oh, I have those socks. Uh, this is a cotton blend yarn, which is, I believe, where is it? Maybe not. I know it's a cotton blend, but it doesn't... Oh, right there. 45% <laughs> cotton, 40% superwash, 15% nylon. But see, feel this. And feel that. It feels slightly different. Yeah, that feels like rougher. I think this probably has a higher cotton blend to it. So Maybe. anyways, thank you, Deb. I really love this. I love these colors. I love these. I can't wait to see what they turn out to be. Well, I can tell you how this one will turn out because <laughs> I have a pair of those socks right upstairs. I like this one. This should be pretty. So thank you very much. I will add to my summer collection. Uh, yesterday, side note, I washed all my socks that I have worn recently. And I'm going to put them in a bin underneath my bed with some lavender sachets and pull out all my cotton ones for the summer. Oh, and I good. realize I actually have a decent amount of cotton socks. Yeah, you knit with cotton quite a bit for socks. Well, your mom Compared has knit to. a few for me, yeah, too. I have, so. I have a few pair, too. Yeah. Um, also, I bought you something for Christmas, and I lost it, <laughs> and when I was cleaning and packing, I found it, <laughs> so Merry Christmas. <laughs> I had to so get it for cute. you because it's I like... I love canvas bags. I know, and look, it's like you can store something in there. I had to get it. Well, this is great for a kitchen. It's from L.L. Bean. I, I think, you know what I'm going to use this for is my off-sites. Because that way I can put like a couple of dollars in there too. Just I just thought it was so cute because I got it at L.L. Bean because it has like a little zipper and you can keep stuff in it. It says L.L. Bean on it. <laughs> it's a I little love bean this. bag. Thank you so much. I it love It had this. fallen down behind the bench in the front room. So when I took it, had the bag of stuff from L.L. Bean, it was fallen out of the oh, bag okay. and down behind there. So when I was cleaning in there, I'm like, ah! I love so, it. Merry Christmas. Thank you. That's cute. So, yeah. yeah, my canvas bag obsessions. I know. I thought of you when I saw it. I had to get it for you. And I was like, you could put like a chapstick in there. You could put stitch markers in there. You could, you put, could yeah. You could put anything in there. It's, it's like big enough to hold stuff. 
Yeah, it could this be a small little fun. notions pouch. Maybe That's not a needle, but definitely stitch markers. Yeah, I know. It's just, I thought it was so cute. But it's also like if you go and... Um, you could put a couple of bucks in yeah. there. Yeah. Put your keys there and call it a day. And um, So, crushes and heart... You're welcome. Crushes and I'm glad that I found it again. I, I was like, where did it go? And then I was like, ugh. I'll find it eventually. And I did. <laughs> so crushes and heartbreak. I had a big heartbreak last week. I had three medical appointments last week. One of them was to see my psychologist. That was great. One of them was to see my my medical my weight center medical doctor. Not to be confused with my surgeon. Oh, okay. My weight center medical doctor. That went great. And then I had to have a barium swallow done. And that was my heartbreak. Um First of all, I was really nervous about it. I don't know if you've had a barium swallow before. Um, I'll just tell you, basically, you, they make you drink some stuff. You have to put it in your mouth and hold it, and then they tell you to swallow, and they, like, take a picture of you Oh, all right. So they can see how your swallowing works, and then they coat you all up with it inside by drinking a lot more, and then they, like, look at They make you move around and do this different thing. So I knew... Because my son had had a barium swallow. I knew that I was going to have to drink stuff and have them, like, take pictures of me drinking. So I, And I knew that the stuff was going to be gross. Mm -hmm. It's chalky. Um, so I was really worried that I might throw it up. And with good reason. Because I almost did throw it up. Um, it was like egg white oh. flavored with chalk. That was, it had no other flavor. So it was like literally... Really? They didn't, I'm like, could you put chocolate in it or something? Orange like, it was so nasty. And it was so, it was thick, like egg white. And, um, and gloopy, like, like, gloopy like that. Like, not blended well. Well, it was just, yeah. it was like if egg whites were made with chalk. <laughs> I can't describe it any other way. It was really gross. So I came in and I had on, I had on, I had on a gown that opened in the back. And then I had another gown that opened in the front okay. so that you can see the fact that it was open in the back. And then I had to wear these giant pants um, because you can't have anything with metal around your waist when they do this test because it can interfere with their pictures or whatever. So I had to wear these giant, like, striped hospital pants. And then I had on my dance go clogs because they don't want you walking around a hospital with, with bare feet, bare feet or bath. sock feet. That would be gross. So um, I come in, and they tell me to stand against this wall on this ledge. It's like a ledge like this wide. Don't jump off. So you get up on the <laughs> ledge, and it's got handles right here, like a jet pack. Like oh, wow. You can hold on to them. And so I'm standing. Well, they were a little farther down, but you can hold on. So I get up on there, and then they bring the drink over to me. And all of a sudden, they, like, zoom me sideways. And I said to the guy, you got to warn me. I almost flew right off the thing. And he's like, sorry, I should have said I was going to move it. I didn't know it was going to move. <laughs> but it could go sideways. Because they adjust it so they can see the best uh, view of your sense. And so he's like, take this thing. And I had to drink it. It was in, like, a um, paper cup. And put it in your mouth. And I put it in my mouth. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to throw it up. Like, it was... <laughs> a combination of the flavor and the texture was so gross. And and then he's like, hold it, now swallow. And then they zoom me side to side and they take pictures. And then he's like, again, you know, and it went on and on. And I was like, I'm going to, I was gagging. Oh, I forgot to tell you, before they made me drink it, they made, they gave me this little, you know, those little hospital cups. They're like this big. Mm -hmm. They gave me this little cup filled with crystals and they gave me another little cup with water. And they're like, these are crystals. Put them in your mouth and then real quick, drink them down with this. And I was like, why? And they said, these are going to um, put gas in your stomachs to expand it to make things easier to see. So I was like, all right. The crystals were like bitter, bitter pop rocks. Like bitter. I can't oh. describe to you. They were bitter. So I put them in and I'm like, <laughs> and I swallow them down real quick and they like immediately expand and they're like okay you cannot burp I was like are you kidding me and they're like no you can't burp and then I'm swallowing the stuff that I'm like oh it was so bad 
So they zoom me a couple of times and then the lady comes and she says, okay, I'm going to take your drink, my nasty drink. And she's like, we're going to put you on your back. And, and I'm like, okay. And she's like, no, just stand there. They put a pillow behind your head and then the table goes like, ee, and you hold on <laughs> to the little handles like a jet pack. And then you're laying down. And I'm like, well, okay. So I'm laying there. And the guy comes over to me, and he's like, we want you to get on your left side, up on your left side. And then he's like, and then you have to drink the rest of the stuff in this glass. And this glass was, like, like this tall. It was like a coffee cup. I was like, I don't know if I can do that. He's like, you just have to. So, and But you have to do it laying on your side. So I'm like, drink it out of the side, laying there. And then he's like, I finish it. Finally, they didn't make me take like the last swallow because I was like, Ooh. and the guy goes, okay, now listen, I need you to do a barrel roll on the table. You're going to roll real fast. He said, you cannot be on your right side long. So you got to roll really fast. And I was just laying there on my side. I said, I said, you do know that I'm here because I'm morbidly obese. I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to do a fast barrel roll on this table. He's like, just do it the best you can. He said, we get a lot of people in here that are way bigger than you. And I was like, oh, my God. And the table's like metal. There was no padding on it whatsoever. So I twirl myself in a barrel roll. I pulled a muscle. From here all the way down to here doing it. Because they're like, don't stay on your right side. You're like trying to roll really fast. And then I get back onto my left side again. And they're like, okay. And they take some pictures. Then they made me lie on my back. And I was like, okay. So the worst part is probably over now. No. So I'm laying on my back. And then they're like, all right. We need you to get on your right side now. And you're going to have to drink a different drink. And I'm like really and they're like it's not as bad this was more like water with chalk in it it really wasn't as bad the other one because of the texture was so gross um so I got on my side but I had to be on my side in an angle so I had to have one leg like forward and like propping up on my knee it reminded me of those break dancers in the 80s when they would like twirl around and like do that pose <laughs> that's what I was laying like in my hospital gown and all my my dance go clogs oh my god holding myself up and the other arm had to be flat by me so i was like holding myself up and i couldn't hold i couldn't hold the cup to drink so the lady had to come because of my weird position come over with a straw and like just put it in my mouth and it was like sat next to me and i just had to keep the straw in my mouth and hold my position and go when they told me to and so i had to drink that and um, that was really uncomfortable, but I did that for a while. So the guy says, you're all done. We just have to do one more thing. So um, he's like, we got to lift you up again. So I hang on to the handles and they like zoom. I don't know why, but they zoom you back up until you're standing on that ledge again. And then he gives me this pill that's like a barium pill that I have to swallow. And I'm like, okay. So I swallow that and I take a picture. It's like, it looked almost like a, um, like a Tums. Okay. But you swallow it whole. So it was that big too. It was like this big. So I swallowed it. They took a picture of it. And then they're like, okay, you're all set. I'm like, that was crazy. I said to the doctor, this is the craziest test I've ever taken. Like, I kept thinking, there. this has got to be on candid camera. Like, it was too <laughs> crazy. Nothing that I read on the internet prior to this prepared me for what this test was going to be like. I literally thought I was going to stand there and drink things. I didn't know I was going to be twirling and right. being on this board. It was crazy. Was and my mom, I had asked my mom, because she had it done about 15 years ago. She had the same test. And I said to her, what's going to happen? She's like, oh, it's no big deal. They just give you a couple of drinks and they take pictures of you drinking. Yeah, that is not what happened. Well, do you think maybe they did it more specifically because of the situation that you're going into? I have no idea. Because I know Max had a barium swallow, but it was close to 15 years ago to see his reflux. Jack did too, like 10 years ago, but it was nothing like that. But I mean, like granted, it, he was a little kid. They wouldn't have been able, I mean, that mess. Max was four months old when he had his done. Yeah, so. Jack was probably the same age. Actually, Jack had it done twice because then he had an eating test done oh, where they right. had I to that. 
None of them involved the jetpack table or twirling <laughs> around or anything like that. So I don't even know what was going on. My mom said she only had to drink one drink. I had to drink two drinks and take a pill and do those little pop Crystals, rocks. Crystals, yeah. Those Whoa. were bad. They were so bitter. They were... I can't even say that they were lemon. They had the bitterness of lemon, but they didn't taste... Like, nothing tasted good. And I said to the lady, this stuff could have been improved if it had some kind of a flavor other than chalk. <laughs> and she funny. said that everyone that works there has to drink it so they know what oh, it tastes really? like. Yeah, they have to try it so they can sympathize with you. And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty gross. So anyway, we're walking back. She walked me back out of the test to go get changed into my clothes. And it, it only took like 15 minutes. It wasn't a long test. Oh, really? Because it sounds like it was a <laughs> it lot just, longer. No, it just, it all happened very quickly, but it was just really gross. And so she said, I said, well, I'm glad that's done. And she said, well, you do have to have another barium swallow the day after your surgery. But you don't really? have to drink the slimy stuff. We give you something else to drink. And I said, is it as bad? And she goes, well. And I was like, don't tell me anymore. I don't want to know. I'm just, you know, don't even tell me. It was the worst. I suppose it's not the worst test I've ever done. But it was like the awkwardest and I have had stomach problems ever since I did that well, test. Well, you're probably just trying to get it out of your system. I mean, that was it Friday. It does take a while for it to And come it's out only of your Monday system. today. So. And I drank a cup that was probably this yeah. tall, full of that slime. It was so bad. I love the slime. Um, so, yeah, I did find out I have a hiatal hernia, which I did not know. So, that I don't know. I'm going to find out this week if the doctor's going to repair it or if it's. Doesn't if there's something that they'll just let it be. I don't know. The surgeon, because this week I have nutrition group, my individual nutritionist, excuse me, my pre op meeting with the anesthesiologist, and meeting with my surgeon. And then I'm done until I have the surgery. Oh, wow! Yeah, that was it. That was my heartbreak. Nothing else. That happened in that in a week was, I had no crushes. It was just all that. That was crazy, man. That sounds up. Uh, my crushes and heartbreaks, I'm trying to think. I never can remember. Um, Zachary started soccer, and oh my God, that was funny. So my oldest son has been doing soccer since about second grade. Once he hit third grade, we started doing the travel because we were told that travel is where it's at. And it's the truth. So we signed up for Zachary. He's in sixth grade now. We signed him up for in town for the spring session. So the in town is third through sixth grade. Tells you how many people do travel. Yeah. So, which is a lot, is basically what I'm saying. So he, they split the teams up to, so there's 45 kids. They split them up to four teams and they play each other. Saturday, uh, Friday was his first practice. Kudos to the coaches, let me tell you. Saturday was his first game. Cam comes over to the game, which is nice. So Zachary on Saturdays, we go for swimming, and then we go from swimming straight to soccer. So Cam goes, oh, we should sign him up for travel next year. I said, I would not put that for the coaches. That's torture for the coaches. I've been on the other side of coaching, and when you have a kid who doesn't know how to play and really doesn't want to be there, it's not fun for the whole team. I would never do that to a team. Yeah. It's not fair. So I said, no, let's, you know, the main reason we did it, he's not, I mean, he's interested in soccer, but he's not interested in soccer. Max right. loved soccer. So the only reason we're doing that is to get him to get some exercise. He is not a kid who likes to exercise. He's not overweight by any means, but he could use a little bit of exercise. And so I'm like, who cares how good or not he is? He's out there. Well, he's just standing there. What he reminded me of, you remember Ferdinand the Bull? Yes. Sitting in there smelling roses. Yes. That's what he reminded me of. He wasn't, I mean, he wasn't as bad as what you see the kids sitting on the baseball diamond playing in the dark. Right. But he, it was social. Like, so if anyone knows soccer at all, you have your forward and you have your defense and you have your positions. So your defense position, you have right defense, left defense. Yeah, well, Zachary was always over wherever the other kid was. It's like, separate, separate. Mm -hmm. And Cam's like, well, you remember dealing with that, right? I'm like, not at sixth grade, I don't, but, yeah. you know. Usually by then, the people that are still doing it are the ones that really enjoy soccer. Exactly. So, 
It was just funny to watch. And then the coach put him uh, into goalie. Yeah, that lasted all of like one day. No, I mean one one shot because I'm pretty sure I didn't see it, but I'm pretty sure he was a kid that would go like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was fun to watch. Um, that was kind of fun. Then um, Max is supposed to. Max has been doing track. I got to see him on Thursday. And actually, he I didn't post this, but he had a great picture. So the one thing I like about iPhone is you can take those bursts, most, bursts of pictures. And um, so I did that, and I got a really good picture out of him. And I sent it to my father, and he's like, how old is he again? Because <laughs> he looks really old in this picture. Oh, well, yeah, that is a good picture. So... That's my son doing track. He actually won. He was doing the 400, and he won the JV at uh, 58.9 seconds, I guess. That's pretty good. Yeah, it is really good. It would take me forever to do that. So that was fun and exciting to watch him. What I really enjoyed the most, because he asked me to go. It was on a Thursday. I'm like, all right, I'll come. And um, yeah, I think it was Thursday. So... I watched him, but he didn't know I was watching him. So you get to see your kid be more natural. Yeah. He didn't do anything like. No, you just I get to see been what they act like when you're not. So it was fun them. to watch him, and um, I like doing that. So it was really fun to watch him. I enjoyed that. Then also, so he was had soccer practice that same night, but he didn't have a game. He his soccer games were on Sunday, um, so that it doesn't interfere with high school sports. But it, there was some issues with one of the other towns, so they couldn't do his soccer game. So that was fun to just watch him do that. What I really enjoyed is I got to go out with my friend, Phil, um, and we got to see The Jungle Book. Oh, yeah. We saw it in 3D. There was a scene. I mean, The Jungle Book, everybody knows the story of The Jungle Book. It's not like I'm giving it away. But when Shere Khan comes out, there's a scene where he comes out, I swear to God, I don't watch it. <laughs> because I'm watching it. You're watching it in 3D. We didn't have the best of seats because we were looking at the times and I said 7 o'clock. My friend says, oh no, the show's at 7.30. I said, oh, all right, whatever. It doesn't make a difference to me. So I go to him. I said, I'll meet you at 7. He goes, why don't we meet at 6.45? I said, okay. Good thing we did because the show was actually at 7. So, I mean, we didn't have the best of seats, but we, really it was an IMAX theater. There are no bad seats right. there. I mean... I, what I don't like, and this is the reason I don't go to 3D films, I don't like the glasses. I feel like I'm wearing sunglasses inside, and I always want to take them off. I don't like the 3D films because real life is in 3D. <laughs> so, like, the first 10 minutes of the film, you notice all the special effects, and then it's just like, like, if you don't notice it anymore. Well, that's the thing. I mean, <laughs> like well, your... so, after watching, after starting to watch this, Shere Khan jumps out at Mowgli, scares the crap out of me because I'm like, it comes out and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I mean, it was really, for some reason, it really just caught me off guard because I think I was getting into the movie and I'm like, the scene set up that you knew something was going to happen, but just the way he did it scared the crap out of me. So the next, the whole rest of the movie, I'm looking like where Ka the snake comes. I'm looking around. I'm looking, my eyes going everywhere on the screen. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I don't want to be scared again like that. There were a couple times where I jumped. But um, it was really good. If you get a chance to see it, not necessarily in 3D, I would highly recommend it. it was, they did it very well. Um, the storyline, I mean, it again, you can't do much with the story. I guess it was more towards the book adaptation than the Disney film that you, you see. Right. Uh, they did it very well, and the voices that they picked, uh, Bill Murray was blue. Aww. And I'm listening to him, and I, my friend Phil had read about the movie, and I said, is that Bill Murray? He goes, yeah. Later on, he's like, I wouldn't have picked him out. I said, oh, no, Bill Murray you can pick out. And then, um, Sheer, no, King Louie. I'm like, who's that voice? Who's that voice? It was Christopher Walken. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I could picture you the face, the voice. but I could not put the name. Uh, it was very good. We had a good time, and then we went out to eat afterwards, so we had we had a really good time. Anytime, get to go out with him is fun, so we had a lot of 
We, we divulged a little into the TMI territory. <laughs> I've been friends with him since fourth grade, and we've usually never crossed that line. We crossed it. It was about time. I mean, really, it was about time. We had a lot of fun. We were laughing a lot. It's always fun going out with him. So that was my crushes. I don't think I had any heartbreaks. I'm trying to think. I did a crud ton of laundry yesterday. I still have a lot more to do because, God forbid, anyone else in my house do it. As my daughter is right now doing my laundry. Hey, I wish mine would. My son, meaning. Um, it's funny because now, because no one else does anything in the house, I don't do anything outside. It's like, you know what? You're going to be that way not doing anything in the house? I'm not doing anything outside. So my fr my kids were cleaning up the yard yesterday. But, of course, because I don't do anything outside the house, the yard doesn't get cleaned up really to my specifications. Mm -hmm. So I'm just letting it go. Yeah, I would. I don't do any outdoors work at all. My kids and my husband do that. Yeah, um, Cam, my husband said, we got to do out outdoor work. I said, that's what you have the boys for. They can rake. Actually, the kids are on vacation this week, so I told my son that um, we have a castle, a play castle in our backyard. I said I wanted them to rake out the, rake out the leaves, get the leaves from inside, and to take a broom and sweep all the... Um, cobwebs away because after you know it yeah. builds up i don't know if anyone goes in there anymore but i'd like them to be able to go in there without fear of getting bit by a spider because we actually do have blue uh, brown with blue spiders in the in this area so that was their job uh for Oops. that part portion of it anyways i'm sure i told them to do a few other things that i probably got the eye roll for <laughs> mom well, um, gossip and innuendo. So the end of the month is coming near. That's when Connecticut Sheep and Wool is. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go to that. that. Yeah, I'm working on You that can't one. go. I'm not sure if I'm going to go. My mom's going to be in town. Um, and it, I don't know what weekend it's the 30th. it is. It is the 30th. Okay, because I know this coming weekend, my mom and I and my mom's friend are going to go to Webb's. Cool. Cause any other like is it a tent sale or is it just webs? Just webs. Okay. We're just going to we're gonna go to webs. We're gonna have I, lunch. Can I like give you money to? Yeah, if you want to buy like needles. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> just tell me what to buy and you can pay me back okay. later. I gotta look, but I think there's a couple of needles I need. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go meet up with my mom's friend and drive out there and like poke around Northampton for the afternoon. Cool. Just have a nice day together. And um, because the next week I have all those appointments mm. and my mom has to go up to Maine to do business. Oh. She has property up there that she has to see to. So um, we're not going to have much time to do stuff next week together. And then the week after that, she's going home. So. Oh. So that'll be. So I'm looking forward to her visiting. And I'm looking forward to going to Webb's. Yeah, that'll be fun. I found out my dad, I was talking to my dad this weekend. He always texts, he emails me, are you working this weekend? I'm like, no, you can call me. So he calls me early early in the morning, like 8 o'clock our time, which is about 8 o'clock p.m. his time. And uh, he's coming home in the first part of May. Oh, that's um, great. Month. Yeah. He said he'd help Cam, my husband. So we had paneling torn down from our kitchen. He said he'd help Cam strip the wallpaper. Great. Yeah. We don't have that much. It's a small kitchen. So, Kim's like, I don't need any help. I said, take it. Yeah, if he's off. My father wants to help you. Just take it. Yeah, sometimes you just got to do that. Yeah, if my father feels like he wants to help, just let him. Yeah. Hey, come on. Who says no to help? <laughs> Apparently my husband does. Fool that he is. Well, so, um... I might be going to the Sheep and Wool in Connecticut. It depends on if my mom wants to go, if Diane wants to go. That'd I don't be know. Fun. I don't know if I want to go by it's myself. It's always been a nice place to go. I like that one. Um, I might be on my pre-op diet then, and I don't know what my pre-op diet is going to be. And if it involves too many things that I have to lug with me, I might not go. Yeah. You don't <laughs> Just be because I don't want to, like, hassle with it. No. Um, I will find out on Thursday what the pre-op diet is. I think, from what I've been reading in my materials, that my pre-op diet will just be what I'm doing now, except for the day before surgery, I have to go full liquid. I think. I might have to drink a protein shake every morning instead of breakfast. 
Mm. That is the other thing. I don't know. I guess I'll just find out. Mm -hmm. So that'll be next week. Also, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to record next. Next That's week? This week again. This is, let's just explain this. Usually we well, record we on Friday. we were recording this coming Friday, were we? I don't think we no, can. No, because I have we have an appointment at, yeah. So normally we record on Friday, which was three days ago, but Sheila had a conflict. So we decided to record on Monday of this week because I have a conflict next Friday. Which it worked out this fr past Friday anyways, because you probably really wouldn't I really didn't want to record. Yeah, I had a that. conflict with my son and work and yeah. So, so it, and then you have a conflict this Friday. So we're kind of doing, t instead of having two shows, we're having one. This in the is middle. the one in the middle. So there will probably not be another show until a week from Friday, right? Um, because of our schedules, I don't have anything after that until the surgery. So God only knows with me because. I've been told by several different people, grab off, grab the off sites as much as you can. So that's <laughs> what I've been doing. Um, yeah, as of right now, on the 29th would be when we'd record next. I have nothing that would... Yeah, I think the, my last... I think I might be work... Uh, actually, I think I might have that day off again. Oh. Because that's, that's my weekend. She's been giving me Fridays off, so... Yeah, I don't think I have anything else before my surgery... I have, I have a hair appointment, but that wouldn't interfere. Yeah, I don't. So this week is my last week of my multiple appointments. So anyway, um, check out the link to win a free craftsy class from Stephanie Town. In our, I will put a thing in our group on Ravelry. I'll probably link it in the show notes too. And. Um, and have all your stuff for the knit alongs. Yeah, because that's ending soon. And we will Figure catch you else. in the next episode. Knit with heart. Bye.